I'm looking at these and I really thought that these were real. See, you don't necessarily I, need to go to the beach to collect <laughs> shells really when you can make them from cool to cast. I cannot believe it. I picked this one up and I'm like, oh, she got a really cool shell. And I'm like, that is a cool to cast. Oh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Well, wait a minute. You have to see what I actually do with them besides just pouring them. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I'm creating today is a wall hanging project with Cool the Cast. Now, would you like to see how I finish these off? Yes, please show us. Here are the supplies that you will need to create the cool to cast shells. Here is the package of cool to cast and a mold. You can use a resin mold, plaster mold, candy mold, any type of mold that has the design that you would like. I have water and a couple of measuring cups and a plastic bag. Now this technique for mixing is what my sister Heidi prefers. I also like to use a plastic container with a lid. This is really easy. So I have a half a cup of cool to cast and I'm putting in a quarter cup of water. Just press some of that extra air out of your bag. Close it up and give it a good shake. Even though I've already zipped it closed, I like to hold on to it because sometimes I find when I start shaking that I haven't really closed it and the cool to cast starts coming out of the bag. So you're going to want to continue to shake this. There's a little bit of extra air in there. Shake this for about a minute. I notice when I use the plastic bags that you want to check the corners to make sure any of the dry cool to cast is not stuck in those corners. You can mix up larger batches. We'll see, I think a half of a cup will fill up one of these shell molds, but you can do larger batches or smaller batches. and we're going to just pour this right into the mold. When you mix up your cool to cast you want it the consistency of pancake batter. This is a little bit thicker than I like so I could have always added a little bit more water but this will be fine. What you want to do is tap this down and make sure that it gets into all of the edges of that mold. Tap on the top and a little on the side, that's going to bring the bubbles to the top. And you'll find as this sits that those bubbles will just pop and go away. What you want to do now is leave this undisturbed for about an hour. It's going to take an hour for the cool to cast to set up. Once your cool to cast has set for about an hour, it is solid and all you need to do is turn your mold over and you should be able to just shake it right out of the mold. Sometimes you have to pop it a little bit and sometimes I actually have to hit the mold into my hand in order to get the pieces out. But uh, they should pop out pretty easy. One of the other things I wanted to tell you, every time that I pour any of my cool to cast there's usually some drops left in the bag and I always keep a jewelry mold handy so that any of the extra plaster that's left over in my bag or container, container I always pour into my jewelry mold. So keep that in mind. You want to use every single last drop of that plaster. Once you have taken your pieces out of the mold, you do want to let them set for several hours or overnight until they are completely dry. When you pop them out of the mold after about an hour, they're solid, but they're still very, very moist. Also, when you take them out of the mold, I like to grab just a wet wipe and run that along the edges to smooth any of the rough edges on the side. 
You can also use sandpaper to do that. So let these set for a couple of hours because you want them to dry out a bit before you add your alcohol ink. To color my cool to cast pieces I use alcohol ink and I mix it with a little bit of water. So I'm going to put water into the bottom of these containers and squirt in my alcohol ink. The more alcohol ink that you use in this mixture, of course, the darker your color will be. So if you want a very light wash, start with more water. Mix that up just a little bit and brush it right on. So this is a little bit brighter than I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more water and lighten that wash up a little bit. I just use very inexpensive kids brushes to use to apply my inks. On this project you don't have to, but I always like to color the back of all of my pieces just in case I don't end up gluing them down. I have a nice finished back. Do the same thing on this. If you want to, you can bring in a bit of both of the colors, of course, and paint these any way you'd like to. If you want a smoother back on the back side of your pieces, you can always sand them. Just lay them down on a piece of sandpaper and rub them back and forth if you want to smooth out that back edge. And that is how easy it is to color your cool to cast pieces with the alcohol inks. You're going to want to let these set completely to dry. Again, depending on the humidity, it may just take a few hours or I just leave them to set overnight. What I'd like to show you next is how I did the crackle effect on my wood. There are different crackle mediums available. This particular medium gives you a look of more weathered wood as opposed to some crackle which give you more of an eggshell crackle effect. So you're going to want to select which type of crackle or antiquing effect that you would like. This is a really cool look with um, weathered wood kind of peeled paint effect. So I'm going to use a little bit different coloring than what I did on my finished example so that you can see this a little bit better. The first step is to paint the base coat on and all of these instructions would be on your bottle of crackle. So be sure and follow whatever label instructions that you have for whichever crackle you are using. But what you're going to do is you're going to base coat this completely this will end up being the background color for your, clack, your crackle. And so keep in mind that you might want to do bolder colors for more contrast. I am going to let this dry completely before I go on to the next step. Now that my paint is dry, it's time to add the coat of this one-step crackle. 
and I just use my fingers to spread it right over the paint and you want a medium thick coat and this is going to need to set for anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes until it's tacky to the touch. I want to make sure that I get that all the way out to the edges. Smooth coat and you will want to let this set here in California, it takes about 30 minutes, so again, depending on your weather, how much humidity there is, you're going to want to keep checking it about every 15 minutes until it has a slightly tacky touch where you can see the imprint of your finger and it holds that imprint. So we're going to let this set. Okay, it looks like this is ready to go for the next step. I have put my finger into this and you can see that it's holding the fingerprint. So the next thing you want to do is pick your contrasting color. This is just a subtle contrast of color. On this particular product you only want to stroke your paint once. So you can't keep going back in, in one spot. So keep in mind make sure you have enough paint out on your palette so that it makes it the whole way down and what you have to do is you need to let this set and in just a few minutes you'll start to see it crack already it's starting to crack right here it's so cool I love playing with crackle so we're going to watch for just a moment and as this starts to crackle, then the top coat is separating so that you can see the bottom coat underneath. See, we are actually watching paint dry. <laughs> what I did on my example on my plaque, my wall plaque, is I used two colors that were very very similar because I wanted just a subtle crackling effect on the back so you can see the difference here where I used a very subtle pink to the back and put the ivory over the top let this dry completely it may take several hours for this to dry completely you can put an overcoat or sealer over this if you'd like to but on my finished example I did not This plaque is really cool. It has nine separate inserts that just lay into the background piece. I have painted each of those and then I've crackled them. And you would just glue these in place. I'd use the Aline's Super Thick Tacky Glue to hold both the wood down and then also each of the cool to cast pieces. So I'm going to just use my fingers here. The super thick is very thick and very tacky. So very easy to use your fingers to apply to the back and give that a nice coat of glue. Center that and wiggle it just a little bit. That helps to secure it in place. Same thing on the larger piece. So continue to glue all of your pieces down. Decide where you want to put all the different colors and designs. Finish gluing those down, set this aside to dry overnight, and then you are ready to hang your seashell plaque.